settle in class. Today we're going over the artificer. From mecha magical might to the not so humble witch, golems and gadgets and flamethrowers. If we're talking magic items, we're talking artificer. Whether we're enchanting items traditionally or just forcing magic into things and bending them to our will, making the mundane magic is what we're all about. We're brewing our strongest potion, blasting away with artillery, and attuning to everything we find. The artificer is about as complicated as a player character gets in 5e, but just bear with me and you'll come out the other side with fresh ideas. We'll start with mechanics, then move into flavor and concept. You ready? Then let's go! Before we get into our different flavors, let's learn what the Artificer is at its core. We're an item-focused mage, only getting spells up to level 5, but getting the most powerful of all. It's called a shotgun, Alka Blam! Okay, but really, we have the us-only spells of Caustic Brew for lingering acid damage, Intellect Fortress for mental protection, and Summon Golem to just conjure our own little Magibek tech companion. The rest of what we have we share with others, but we have things from all over the map. Divine, Arcane, even spells the others don't usually share, like Rope Trick and Sanctuary. Better yet, we can pick from that full list every time we prepare. One day I might mostly have Cleric spells, and the next be a mini Druid. We're pretty tanky for a spellcaster at 1d8 HP and medium armor and shields. Our saving throws are Intelligence and Constitution, so we keep our focus and wits about us even when we're taking a beating. We start with Thieves Tools, Tinker's Tools, and an Artisan Tool of our choice. And that actually does matter for us. We use them as our spell focus, so we can cast with anything from a lockpick to a monkey wrench. And I wasn't kidding about that shotgun. We're proficient in firearms and simple weapons. There are a couple benefits that tend to go under the radar, like expertise in tools or adding intelligence to a check or save a few times a day, but one of my favorites is spell storing at level 11. You take a spell you know and put it into a weapon or focus. You don't need to use a spell slot or even have it prepared. And it has double your intelligence modifier and uses. With a good score, you double your spells per day, or just give your fighter scorching ray. Useful for combat, utility, even roleplaying if you want to be manipulative. The barbarian might not trust goblins, but if she wants me to give her sword and large in the morning, she's gonna keep her mouth shut. Otherwise, the rogue's getting invisibility instead. I'm not usually that generous, I prefer to have more catapult, but depending on your magic item loadout, you might have the spare slots to make it worth it. And you will have a lot of magic items. Those and infusions are the big draw to the class. Infusions are basically magic items that we make and sustain with our own power. We can only have a few at a time, but summoning magic items through sheer will and wit is no joke. We can replicate a bunch of classic magic items, but we also have unique ones, like building a homunculus or arcane propulsion armor. Eventually, we even start building normal magic items in a fraction of the time and cheaper. And we're not limited by the normal three attuned items either. We get four, five, and eventually even six powerful items at a time. Not only that, but at level 14, we can just ignore requirements like class, race, level, spells known. Who cares if this is an ancient elven secret? It got cracked by a teenage goblin. And at level 20, if you manage to get there somehow, plus one to all saves per attuned item. And we can ditch an infusion item to hit 1 HP instead of 0 when taking damage. We are the masters of artifact, but in order to get to that point, you need to pick a specialization. There are 4, granting power at level 3, 5, 9, and 15. We'll start with mine, the Alchemist. I'm probably supposed to be unbiased despite being one myself, but I tend to reflexively use Catapult on anything with my boss's handwriting on it, so I guess we'll never know. Anyway, the Alchemist is a potion brewing extraordinaire. We're wonderful at brewing normal potions and get expertise in it, but even without our tools, we can craft our experimental elixir. We can make a few each day depending on our level, and the effect is random. Restore HP, increase your AC or speed, let us fly, transform our body, or give a bonus to every attack and save for a minute. At level 9, they start giving temporary HP as well, and of course our potions can be used by anybody, so even stuff that doesn't seem incredibly useful on us, the barbarian or monk might love you for it. Now that's what we can do with our bare hands, but we'll usually have our tools because when used as a focus, we can add our intelligence modifier to healing or even damage as long as it's acid, fire, poison, or necrotic. We can also use them to cast Nessa Restoration for free a few times a day starting at level 9. At level 15, you can do the same with Greater Restoration or Heal once a day, and we start resisting acid and poison, and we become immune to being poisoned. And don't forget, we have an expanded list of spells that's constantly growing and always prepared. We'll have the expected healing spells like Healing Word and Raise Dead, but also some offense like Flaming Spear and Blight. All of our specializations get their own spell list. Speaking of which, our second specialization is Alchemist. You don't need others. Only Alchemist. Just Alchemist. Hit that like button and sub for more Alchemist. The Armorer is mainly focused and primarily gets a mix of blunt offense like Shatter and battlefield defense like Wall of Force. It fits perfectly since your focus is on your amazing magical armor. In fact, you can turn any armor into arcane armor in a matter of seconds. Just have to have your smithing tool. When you're in your arcane armor, you can use the armor itself as a spell focus. You don't need to meet the armor's strength requirements. You can take it on or off as an action and it even replaces missing limbs. If you can't tell by the focus on armor, this one is meant for battle. You even get an 
extra attack at level 5. Not only that, but at level 9, you get to put different infusions on your head, legs, arm, and chest, basically turning this into a mech suit. On top of all that, you get two extra infusions if you put them on the armor, so you can kit yourself out while still helping your party. Which infusions you want, however, depends on the type of arcane armor you're wearing. There's two, Guardian and Infiltrator. They have a special ability and a special weapon, which use your intelligence modifier instead of your strength or dex. You can choose the type whenever you make the armor, but you can change it on a short rest. With Guardian type, you're going full focus on melee. You can get your level and temporary HP as a bonus action a few times a day, and you get the Thunder Gauntlet. These deal 1d8 thunder damage, count as dual wielding if you don't have a shield, and if you hit your target, they have disadvantage on attacks against anyone but you until your next turn. At level 15, your armor is perfected, and you can pull huge creatures 25 feet towards you as a reaction, and make an attack if that puts them next to you. I'd suggest using the Mind Sharpener infusion to auto-succeed failed constitution saves, but if you prefer a mix of melee and ranged, try the Infiltrator. 5 extra feet of movement, advantage on stealth checks, and you can put a lightning launcher in your hand or chest. 9300 range, about the same as a short bow. It only deals a d6 lightning damage, but you can make that 2d6 once per turn, and you decide after you hit. And the level 15 perfect upgrade is that anything you hit starts to glow, and has disadvantage when attacking you, and the next attack anyone makes against it has advantage. And if that advantage attack hits, they take an extra d6 of lightning damage. So yeah, pretty strong. Of course, as strong as that is, if you're not wanting to be on the front line to begin with, I'd recommend Artillerist. They're exactly what they sound like, magic fire and a big boom. Your tool of choice is wood carving tools. Sample size of one, but if a wall of fire appeared behind me while someone ran at me with a ripsaw, I would be terrified. They can use those tools or smithing tools to craft their main weapon, the Eldritch Cannon. It only takes an action to make, and the first per day is free. You see, it only lasts an hour, and you can only have one, but you can restore it with a first level spell slot, and it is incredible value. You can make a flamethrower with 2d8 fire damage in a line, a ballista with 2d8 force damage and knockback, or a heal bot that gives out temporary HP to everyone you want within 10 feet, and it's just your bonus action to make it attack and move. At level 9, they deal more damage and can self-destruct, and at level 15, you can have two. And they start making magic shields that give everyone within 10 feet half cover. Oh yeah, and all of these are small or tiny. You can actually have a flamethrower in your pocket, or just riding on your shoulder. And while that's blasting away, you can use your level 5 arcane firearm for your own damage, because you still have your action. Now it's not a real gun, but it does add 1d8 of damage to all of your spells, which is why their entire extended spell list is walls and AoE spells. But not every artificer is focused on firepower, some artificers are the alchem- The battlesmith is so different, it doesn't even start with an A, which does make sense, as it is the only B in my heavily biased book. Have you loved everything you've heard so far, but thought there were just too few things to keep track of? You thought the artillerist had a good idea with that turret, but they didn't go far enough? Well, in that case, what is wrong with- Do I have the subclass for you? The Battlesmith focuses on defense, mostly things like shield and aura of vitality, and they get martial weaponry. Even more important, they attack with their intelligence modifier instead of strength or dex. As long as the weapon is magic, given you're the make magic item class, I believe you. you get extra attack at level 5, but the big deal for this class is the Steel Defender. You get a construct with decent bulk, force damage, and can give an adjacent enemy disadvantage as a reaction. It's medium too, so if you're small like me, you can ride it. It's healed through the Mending Cantrip, but if you need to, you can just build a new one over a long rest. You use your bonus action to command it, otherwise it can only dodge. Unless you're unconscious, then it does whatever it chooses. Wait chooses? Did you make this thing sentient just to actively override its free will? Um, at level 9 you get a 2d6 heal with 30 foot range, your int modifier per day. Alternatively, you can add that 2d6 as force damage whenever you or your companion hit. That damage or HP doubles at level 15, and your defender gets more AC and starts doing damage when it gives disadvantage. The battlesmith is a middle ground and can be a little awkward, but nobody else lets you ride a giant robot weasel, or penguin, or mocking recreation of your rival. And with that, in a shocking twist, we actually actually end this alphabetical list with B. You'll notice that puts us at the top of nearly every list, like we deserve. Fine, I'll cut the bias for a moment. The Artificer is about as complex as 5B gets on the player end, juggling items and infusions and magic. It's good for somebody who's played before, but can be tricky if it's your first time. Every subclass is specialized into one role, but we can be pretty good at nearly anything if you give us enough prep time. However, you do need to familiarize yourself with your options, or you might end up underwhelmed. If you put in the effort to learn what we can do, you'll find we have incredible versatility and plenty of unique tricks. It's my favorite class for a reason, and while I know it might not be for everyone, 
fun. If it sounds fun and you know the system, I'm sure you'll have a blast. But if this doesn't sound like it'll quite scratch the itch or it's a little too complicated, I would suggest the Bard, the Forge Domain Cleric, or... Ugh, do I have to say it? Fine. The Wiz Alchemist. Try it anyway. And thanks for watching. I'll be bouncing between this and a few other systems and series for a bit. A luxury I can afford thanks to you wonderful viewers and especially my coffee supporters. This month's top supporters are Feral Goblin and Sergeant Daniels. Thanks for the help. Class dismissed.